So one of my mentees was asking about how to, uh, you know, or how I would approach modeling a uh, you know, a column like this, or or a a balustrade, or <laughs> however it's pronounced. Uh, it looks to me like those you know those wooden things that go on a staircase that you tile out like five million times and consume your poly count with. So, um, you know, I thought it was interesting enough to show because typically when you know, people do these sorts of tutorials, they start by drawing out a bunch of splines and then they do like a, a revolve operation and that kind of thing. But I don't find that to be all that practical of an approach, like when doing real um, uh, production art, because typically that's just, uh, it's just not something I would do. So I thought it'd be interesting to show how I would actually tackle this sort of shape. So what you see here is me just kind of ha handling the round parts that I know are straight cylinders just you know, by copying and pasting cylinders around and fitting them to the background image. And uh, yeah, when something happens that I need to comment on, I'll jump back in, but let's just move along. So since I knew that we were going to be trying to bake this down to a low poly, I, I went ahead and set up the rounded edge shader on my default material because I wanted to show how you could build the mesh from separate pieces and then those separate pieces will come together you know, as one when you do the render out. And so the normal map looks good. You know how the rounded edge shader works. but. Uh, this is uh, you know, a large part of what I end up doing for for students is just going through all the steps and trying to demonstrate the entire process as best I can you know, and, and try to impart those best practices. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to figure out how am I going to best model these these curvy pieces, and uh, what I decided on was just you know to make more cylinders, but um, to actually do the shaping. So what I'm doing is I'm setting up these cylinders so that they fit the widest part of the of the curvy bit that they need to represent, and then once I've got that we're going to use the FFD plugin uh, that I've covered in previous videos. I'll put a link to that video down in the uh, a description of this one so you can catch it if you haven't seen it yet. But uh, yeah, we end up adding some edge loops to these uh, cylinders, then FFDing them into position or, or FFDing them so that they fit those curvy shapes. So I believe that's what we're going to do right here. Uh, I you know, I throw a transparent material on there just so I can get a better look at the uh, shape behind. So you know, like I say, add some edge loops, then we throw on the FFD, select the edges, and then uh, scale them down using the FFD cage. You can see how that gives you those nice curving flowing shapes and we didn't have to build a single curve or spline or any of that sort of stuff. This is all very manageable with just standard modeling techniques. And um, you know, again, that's typically how I end up doing production work is I just use standard techniques for most stuff. It, I mean, to be honest, I was kind of surprised at how well this worked out but uh, yeah, this was what we ended up going with and this worked really well for uh, this person. And uh, 
yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this. So uh, the video is going to finish up. We'll just make the rest of these shapes. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching. I'll catch you later.